Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Cytoflex SRT Cell Sorter. What is it really like for a user? I am Jennifer Woods of LabRoots, and I'll be your moderator for today's event. Today's educational web seminar is presented by LabRoots and brought to you by Beckman Culture Life Sciences. To learn more, visit Beckman.com. We encourage you to participate today by submitting any questions you may have during the presentation. To do so, simply type them into the Ask a Question box and click Send. We'll answer as many questions as we have time for at the end of the presentation. You may also submit any technical issues here as well if you have trouble seeing or hearing the presentation. I'd like to now welcome our speakers, Dr. Karen Hogg and Dr. Peter O'Toole from the University of York. Dr. Hogg and Dr. O'Toole, you may now begin your presentation. Okay, I'm going on mute whenever you're ready. Jennifer, thanks very much for that very kind introduction. And thank you, Beckman Coulter, for actually inviting us here today to talk about the Cytoplex SRT and our first-hand experience of it. I'm Peter O'Toole from the University of York Bioscience Technology Facility, and joining me today is Dr. Karen Hogg. Karen, would you like to say hello? Hello, yeah, thank you for giving us the opportunity to tell us our experiences with the SRT and we're going to put it through its paces as well so you'll get to see it for real in action. Karen, thank you very much. So before we go any further, I think we need to give a, a quick disclaimer uh, so, because this is sponsored by Beckman Coulter. However, uh, and this is what they're trying to tell you here, they're disclaiming to make sure that whatever we say can't be pinned back to them for any liability reasons, because what we are going to tell you today is our own personal experiences and may not reflect uh, the views of Bettman Coulter themselves. So Bettman Coulter, thank you for trusting us to actually present. Uh, oh, you haven't seen what we've got to say yet. This is going to be a very different type of presentation. I have some slides that we'll go through at the start. But then we are going to go live to the instrument. We're going to set it up live. And whilst it's going through its protocols, we will come back to the slides. And then when Karen goes, Pete, go live again, we will go back to Karen and she'll go to the next processes. And we will hopefully, hopefully it is live, it could go wrong. We will hopefully do a live cell sort and show you that it is sorting exactly what it's telling us it's sorted. So we will talk you through it. So this is seat of the pants stuff for us today. So, you know, it's really good just to, so you can understand exactly where we are coming from uh, and what our interest is in the SRT itself. We're actually based in a multidisciplinary department of biology, which means we have to work with cancer cells, with the immunologists, with the stem cell groups, with the microbiologists, with their yeast, their fungi, the bacteria, to the plant biologists with a big plant class, to the biochemists. We even have to work with users outside of the department, chemists, looking at emulsions, all sorts. So when we're looking at instrumentation, especially in flow cytometers, we're looking for good usability and good analysis. Now, on the right-hand side was the Bioscience Technology Facility. So I'm director of this facility, of which imaging and cytometry is just one component of this. Now, imaging and cytometry is my own personal lab as well, but Karen Hogg is, I've got to say, our resident expert in flow cytometry uh, with this itself. And I've been working with Karen now since 2002. Uh, if we go through, the, the lab itself is more than just a core facility for the Department of Biology. We're an international hub for research into neglected disease, leishmaniasis when we have nodes in East Africa, South Asia, and Brazil. We also have beta test, an international reference site for many, many leading international companies, as well as startup companies, for which the Benchtop Sorter, the Cytoplex SRT, is one such beta test. And we've had this since, I, I think, December, was it, Karen? Yeah, so an early Christmas present, uh, when it came in to York itself. Uh, but we haven't really had it up and running because of COVID and Christmas through to the begin start of this year. And I think you'd be blown away by the amount of data that we've already got off it from the different user base. Now, this slide gives a brief overview of, uh, of our labs here at York. And in orange itself, you can see where the, the research and development labs are, 
and in blue is the is the service the core the shared res shared resource labs themselves so this is where the flow cytometers are and i, I find this quite interesting because when we started we had a, an analyzer and a sorter in one room but as cytometry became very successful at york it grew in popularity and so we had another one and then another one and then another one which kind of went into my neighbor's room but i won't talk too loud because he's just next door and then i had to start pinching space into our r d labs and then where karen is sitting today in our beta test demo lab we have another of our analyzers is encroached into that space and we have the cytoflex srt in that space as well so it's amazing just how much flow cytometry has expanded in its popularity here at york and again, back in 2002, when we started here at York, uh, we had just a few instruments, including the MoFlow and the Cyan. And today, we've really blossomed into so many other technologies. And in red, these are where we are international reference sites or beta tests for these various companies that you can see here. Now, critically, because we have to serve a broad discipline of users, when we run our analyzers, we have to make sure they can run with all sorts of sampling types, which is why we have varied systems and the MoFlow Astrios, which is ultimately so versatile. But that's not everything. And so really, the SRT is addressing a real need with us here at York. Now, I've stolen some of the slides, with permission, from Bettman Coulter themselves, because there seems to be little point in reinventing the wheel and, and just essentially using very similar slides. So apologies, Beckman Coulter at this point. This is their picture of their of their Cytoflex SRT in their lab. And you'll notice a little post-it note on the side of it. This is it in our lab here in York. And we will be going live to the camera in just a moment's time. But I'd like to point out, you'll notice the two flowers. This is when it arrived at the end of December. Two pots of flowers because actually it arrived pretty much on Karen's birthday. So Karen didn't just get flowers from, uh, from ourselves, but she also got an SRT to start playing with. Uh, so on this point, I think you should see it live in the lab. So Karen, over to you. Thank you very much, Pete. Before I actually run a sample, I'm just gonna open the door and show you where the collection of the samples will take place, either in tube or in plate mode and also where the sample is loaded into the Cytoflex SRT. So I'm gonna take out the sample tube. This has got some quality control beads in and place it back into the sample holder and shut the door and also close the collection door, but also show you that there's um, some light to enable you to see with inside as well without having to open the door. I'm now gonna share my screen and take you to the application software, which is the Cytex for SRT software, so you can see the quality control actually being run. So previous to this, there's a startup program, which takes 10 minutes, and the fluidics are checked. The pressurized tanks are verified to make sure they've got the right um, pressure, and the flow cell and the sheet filter is the bubbles. Now, the quality control beads are the Cytoflex Daily QC fluorospheres. So anybody that's used to having a Cytoflex analyzer, they're exactly the same bead. So we have to choose the QC bead lot number because the target gains are lot specific. So I'm going to click Start now, and the QC will commence, and the sample will then be, chamber will be pressurized, so you'll see that happening in the window if you keep an eye on that. But right now I'm gonna pass you back to Pete and it's we're gonna walk you a bit further through the um, what's in the box and the lasers and the detectors that we have within the system. So over to you, Pete. Yeah, thank you, Karen. And if I could grab my camera back on, please. Thank you very much. Karen, that was great, thank you. So actually, why is it QCing even? So this is a quite a good time to bring this. This is the uh, option laser configurations for this. Now, at the beta test stage, actually, there was a few of us brought in at the concept stage of this product, and I was fortunate to be feeding into the concept stage. And what we what what was originally designed, we actually came up as a user group of users 
real users uh, that gave some suggestions to Corta. And actually, they adopted quite a few of those. I think that's fantastic because it means they have made a product, not what engineers think is great, but they've listened to the user base and put in what the users were requesting and thought were best. So you can see here the, the various options of the colors. And if you look at this top, this, this is the one that excites me most, is this top option, is that we now got five colors off the violet, which is brilliant for using the BV dyes as well as other fluorochrome types. So you know, this is not a system that is just for Cytoflex users. This is a system now that our Fortessa users can come in and use without having to adapt their panel significantly. And that's really important. That it doesn't matter if they're the Cyan users, the Cytoflex users, the Fortessa users, they can come straight on. Most of them can apply the same panels into the SRT for sorting their cells. So we've got five off the violet, critically five off the yellow, where we get the best signal to noise for most of these emissions. We've got three off the red and two off the 488 nanometer laser. But of course, not everyone needs all those colors, and those colors come with expense, of course. And so you can cut right down to much more cut down, paired back options to make it a very affordable option for those who are just looking for something more simple for their analysis itself. So you've got those two to four lasers up to 15 colors throughout that time and upgradable through its lifetime, which is also quite important to remember. And Kevin, have I missed anything critical uh, about this, these configurations that you'd like to add? No, I think you've covered most of it, but its flexibility and its range has really allowed people to move quite seamlessly from the Cytoflex analyzers onto the sorters. So um, that's been really good when people have got a panel that they want to you know, have a go with a sorter. It's been brilliant because I've just been able to say, well, come along, let's just, just give it a go. I've not really had to um, do much amendment or tweaking or ask them to find a, a different antibody fluorophore. And, and we did mention earlier the, the, the need to do all sorts of size particles. And it has got that violet size scatter detector on here, again, for enhancing small particle detection. So it is a cuvette based sort of. This is different to our Astrios. It won't replace our Astrios. It fits in a very different niche area, a very actually probably more varied area compared to our Astrios. And we'll tell you the real advantages of it in just a little bit compared to that. But we've got a, a fixed laser alignment. So there's now no tweaking of the lasers. This is this, the room Karen's in, the room that Karen is in at the moment doesn't have air conditioning. Uh, it, it, it has some crude heating. It's not an optimal lab environment, and yet it's still working super reliably. That's really critical with that fixed alignment is very, very robust indeed. We've talked about the laser line. The sensitivity is because it's using the same APDs uh, as the Cytoflex does, which really do make a significant signal to noise difference, uh, which is great for teasing out those small detectors itself. Uh, so you can see the peak, we've got the scatter sensitivity and so forth on this as well. If I just flick to the next slide, another really important difference. So again, this is a Cytoflex, but it isn't a, a, a peristaltic pump like the analyzer. This is now, as Karen mentioned, this is a pressurized system, just like a classic sorter would be. So we've got our sheath pressure. So it's got that whole fluidic systems of that. It's quite a small footprint. It can be on bench top, it can be under the desk, which gives more flexibility for space. So it, it is an incredibly small footprint. I think you saw that when Karen moved her arm across earlier, and you'll see more of that later when I go in there to get the live sort offer to show you what is actually sorted. Okay, and so it is neat and tidy and small. <laughs> Karen's already mentioned that she's put the five mil tube into the sorter. So it's a classic five mil tube that you'd introduce your sample into the sorter itself. And it can really have varied flow rates from around 10 to around 100 microliters uh, per minute, approximately. It is adjustable, obviously, and it can be really ramped up, especially for cleaning. Uh, the nozzle size, the nozzle is a bit different. We'll come to the nozzle. I think Karen will show you that later on. Once we've done the sort, Karen will take the nozzle out and show you it physically. Uh, it's a very different type of nozzle to look at and super easy to use, which is a real bonus again for users who will be using this themselves. So we've got that, it's a fixed nozzle, 100 microns, four-way sorting 
itself and it can sort your pure and it can catch the abort as well so you can still maximize your yield on the back of this now one of the other bits that we were really keen to emphasize they, they, they put the, the, the high-end uh, robotic arm inside the chamber which can do your 96 384 well plate sorting so if you're for your stem cell research and so forth or for your gen single cell genomic analysis but here's the key thing it now doesn't do two point uh, positioning and extrapolate through to all 96 wells it now does four point uh, checks controls so now it doesn't matter if the robotic arm isn't perfect for whatever mechanical reason it will be able to extrapolate to make sure that it's always hitting the middle of every well across the whole plate, which actually makes it far more robust uh, and far fewer engineer call outs. And for us, it's just so much easier and more reliable compared to other systems that we've had in the past. So what we'll show you in a little while, not quite yet, is we'll show you actually how we set up a plate source. Now, most of our users do bulk sorting. <laughs> But it's very hard to show you that the bulk sort has been really, really good in quick time. But what we'll do is a plate sort. And when we do the plate sort, we'll be able to take the plate live, take it to a microscope, and show you that it is sorted every event that it is said it will sort. So I'm going to hand you back to Karen, who I think is now ready for the next stage. Karen? Yes, indeed. So I'll bring you back to the Site Expert software. finished. So we've had um, some checks done on the system to make sure that the laser output is within specifications and the target gain, fluorescence intensity and the coefficient of variance, the CV, is all within specifications. Now this part of the QC also does um, first part of the drop delay, which is the distance from the bottom of the cuvette to a maintenance six 38 nanometer laser and that's um, what the drop delay one determination is shown there but now that's been completed we want to set the sorter up for sorting so it does a sort calibration and it's asking me now do I want to start this right away and I'm going to click yes and so now it brings up a window to do the droplet calibration and also do the side Stream calibration and finish that drop delay calculation. So I'm going to pass you back to Pete so that he can finish off talking about the soft system while this um, five minutes and 48 and counting down <laughs> seconds carries on. So back to you, Pete, and then we can come back when this has uh, completed its task. Thank you, Karen. If I just bring my camera back on, thank you very much. I'm back. Uh, so, we, we will look at the plate sorting in more detail uh, in a few moments and we'll show you how we calibrate across all four points. But actually, Karen, do you want to talk about some of this as well? Because this is just a Cytoflex uh, software, so, so site expert software. So, actually, if you do have a Cytoflex already, it's exactly the same software platform, just with a, a few added bits. Uh, such as being able to see the stream live as you're sorting, even though you, you can't do much with it. It sorts it all out for you in the background. Uh, but it does make it super intuitive for the users. So at York, we have been getting users to use it themselves to make sure that it's not just experts that can use it, but the sorters and uh, the, the users can pick it up really easily. And we'll ask more, talk about that more and uh, try and bring more about that into it. So, Karen, do you want to just talk through these extra bits? Thanks, Pete. And yes, indeed, all of our users have found the workflow for startup, QC, and drop delay calibration really easy to follow as the process is, is very intuitive. So, the sort calibration is now complete. So, we can move over to the software again and then get sorting. So, I'm going to share my screen and hopefully then you will be able to see everything that is going on. Now, I just also want to point that while Pete was talking, my microphone dropped out. So I'm now using the microphone 
on the um, webcam, so my voice might sound a bit different, and also you might actually hear the noise from the Cytoplex SRT a little more than you did before, because it sat directly on top. So now I'm sharing my screen, you should be able to see the QC report and the sort status window showing us that the drop delay calibration has been run and it has passed and that the um, auto maintain status is, is on. So now that is complete, I can show fewer details of that so that we can actually get the experiment running. So the drop delay is shown by the green line and then this red line, you can actually move to wherever your preference is. So today I'm gonna mark the, the little satellite drop between the last patch drop and the first drop just so I can keep track of where that is. So now I'm going to close the QC because we're all done with that and we are we are ready to play and I'm going to open from this window here which gives you a list of recent experiments the GFP sort that I'm going to do today. Now I've already run this sample a little bit so it enables me to, to set the gate but I'm going to duplicate the tube without data to give me an empty tube here and then I'm going to click run and we should then see cells through to the flow cell and then the signals arriving at the detector. So we've got our forward arm side scatter shown here, we've got our single cells that are identified by side scatter height versus area and then we have our GFP for shown here. So the acquisition settings can be changed during a run mode sample by clicking this icon here, there's a little spanner shown there, and we can change um, any of the parameters. So here I'm just gonna change the forward scatter down and then click restart, and you can see that hopefully the um, cells have shifted in that plot. If I want to change the plot type, I'm just gonna change it to a dot plot because it might make it easier for you to see on the screen. It's very easy, you can just right click and then choose the type of plot that you that you require. So um, I'm going to close this um, acquisition window now. And if I want to record the sample, I can just click record and now it changes the blue flashing dot to a green flashing dot. Um, you still get an FPS file if you use a run file. There is no problem with that. So don't fear if you forgot to get press records, you still get your data, which is always a bonus. And so what we want to do now is consider our gates and whether um, we are we are happy to um, set them up for sorting. So I'm going to stop this run now and then um, set this up for, for, for sorting. So I'm going to duplicate the tube again and click run. And this time I'm going to bring up my sort plate. And you can change um, the parameters that, that you wish to have sorted into your 96 well plate. But before we do the sorting, you need to make sure that the sort squirts are going to go into the right well. So we need to do some, some calibration. So I'm going to do that next by clicking the calibrate tool. So you've got a little plate icon there and we can see that we've got a standard 96 well plate and then we've got four corners to calibrate which gives you really good deposition of your cells into the weld across the whole of your plate. Many of our users have been very impressed with the um, accuracy of this to all parts of the plate. So you can choose to test a current weld. So here it's upper left, upper right, lower right or lower left or I am going to choose all corners and then choose to test. Now, um, we then get a squirt in the four corners of the plate and you can then say whether it needs to go up a bit, down a bit, left a bit, right a bit, and then you can then save those positions and then you're good for sorting. So I'm just gonna let it complete that task and then visibly have a look to make sure that we're gonna get the right cells in the right well. So I'm going to open the door and have a look. And certainly, yes, that looks good. So we're now ready to sort. So I can save this 
If I want to sort a different number of cells in the well, so here I've got 20 in these wells and 10 in the um, blue wells, then I need to be able to tell it to do that. So I've just clicked um, a, a new tube, and I'm going to highlight these wells, tell them that they are going to have 100 cells in these ones. So I've given that group the name of 100. I'm going to choose purity mode here. So you have various different options, single, purity one to two, or indeed enrich. And then I'm going to have the target count for 100, so it matches the sort group name. We should see we've got a different color and 100 shown there. So I'm now happy that um, we have got our sort set up correctly. And we've got our logic set up for GSP, and that's shown in the hierarchy here. So we've got cells, single cells, and GSP. So we're now good to go. But so you can actually see that happening, I'm going to now switch my camera over so that you can actually visibly see the sort taking place in front of the cytoplex. So if I open the, the window, we can see we've got the plate in place there. And so if I um, shut the door, hopefully you can still see with the light on. And now I can set it up to actually sort. So if I press sort, it will immediately go to that task. I need to put my auto maintain on. And then we can proceed further. So the auto maintain is just making sure the drop light is in the correct place. And then we can continue sorting. So if I click sort now, off it will go and put those cells in the wells as requested. So we've got 100 cells going into A1 to 6 and then dropping down the plate and quite swiftly moving on to the 10s and 20s. The sort target percentage is 63%. So we've chosen something fairly fast today. Um, we're not looking for something that's a very, very rare percentage, so this part will be done swiftly. So at this point, hopefully Pete is going to appear, as if by magic, and take the plate over to the confocal microscope so we can visually show you the number of GFP-positive cells in the well. So um, I'll just wait for him to appear. So there you go. So you've got 20. A little bit of feedback there as we're both in the room, but hopefully you'll excuse us that in this live demo. So please rush off to the confocal microscope to have a look and count the number of fluorescent cells and hopefully prove to you, fingers crossed, that there are 20 GSP positive cells um, in the wells shown um, in this part of the plate and 10 in those. I don't think we're going to go as far as counting the hundreds because we might be here till tea time. So while Pete's actually doing that, I can duplicate this tube and show you how to set up a bulk sort. So I've just duplicated the tube and now I can um, show you how to do that. So if I close my sort plate window and then we can do a bulk sort setup. And it's saying I'm going to lose my plate settings if I continue. So I will click yes because I'm quite happy to do that for this for this demo. So here we've got left two, left one right one and right two. So if I want to then sort, I can activate the screen that I want. I can choose the logic and I can choose the purity mode. So the bulk sort, single purity or um, enrich. So we can take the target count, the tube size, which is shown there is five mil, and you can say how much volume you might put into the tube to start with and it will monitor the sort to make sure you don't overflow. So I think I can stop sharing now and Pete will hopefully be able to tell us how many GFP. Yeah, coming to it, Karen.
Nothing like a bit of pressure, is there? Right, I need you to be able to see the monitor. Yeah, I can see that. Right, Karen, I've got the first drop. Bingo. Just stop, let's be a pause. I can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Bear with me and I will go and get the next well on top of that as well. Give you a second. Uh, oh, I have a lot of microscopy skills, Karen. Oh, you can use a microscope, Pete. I'm sure you can remember. Uh, go for it. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, sixteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. And do one more. Be adventurous. <coughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Oh, sorry, I didn't show it, did I? Ah. No, I'll, I'll there you go, you. do it again, sorry. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Brilliant. And, and there it is, scanning away nicely on the confocal. And... Brilliantly, I don't think I have disturbed if I just flick my camera back round. Aha! Yep, the grass has been quite nicely, so I've even got another witness besides the live one. That's on the Aliva 7. Karen, back over to you. Thank you very much, Pete. So, I'm going to share my screen again and finish showing you the bolt sorting setup while Pete then gets up. Uh, back to the office to uh, continue on with the presentation. So I was mentioning that the um, bolt stream, bolt sorting allows you to type in the volume that you put into your um, five mil tube and then it will show you the total volume in a bar at the bottom here. So I might as well carry on and, and, and sort this um, and we can um, then see how it looks in progress while uh, while that's going on. So I'm going to choose some stop criteria here. So I'm just going to choose um, 100,000 events and time sort. Well, we can just leave it to run because I'm going to stick with it. I'm not going to let it uh, overrun. But if you want it to sort for 10 minutes and stop, you could uh, plug that in there. So I can now click Sort and it will sort away and we will then see the numbers appear on the screen. So we can see that it has got a sort count now that is that is going up and we can see the events per second here is only shown at about 140 but the sample flow rate is 10 microliters a minute so I can take that up to 60 microliters a minute and we can now see that the events per second have increased and the sort count is, is succeeding. Um, so it will give you a message if your abort rate goes higher and red, these numbers will appear. And that's useful particularly for users that are not um, familiar with sorting. It gives them a warning that maybe they might want to consider their parameters to, to get a, a better yield. Um, so also during the sort, if the um, Cytoflex SRT identifies any problems, um, it will stop the sort, the waste catcher will come out, the flow cell will debubble, and then if the um, system is able to then continue sorting, it, it will continue to, to do so. And this is important for users that um, have left the system, um, and then if there's some minor problems, the, the, the sorter can correct them itself and, and then carry on the sort. Um, and Certainly, you know, this gives the users that um, confidence that they can do self-service sorting and, and walk up and proceed um, with the system. And there are certain checks and balances in place to alert them if there's a problem, to try and make some corrections, and then tell them if, it, if it's uh, not possible and you need to intervene. So 
I think Pete is back now and is going to um, continue on with the presentation um, of the system. Um, and um, so I will stop sharing my screen for now. But I'll let the talk carry on going. Um, and uh, maybe we can pop back and see how it's going. So you can see how it how it looks. So back over to you, Pete. Karen, thank you very much. And oh my goodness, we did it live. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant! Sorry, I'm still buzzing. That that that's one hell of a risk. But absolutely brilliant. Well done, Karen. You're a genius. Uh, or is the SRT a genius, or maybe a bit of both? Karen, thank you. That was brilliant to see in action. Okay. So actually, hopefully you grabbed from that that you've watched it go through QC. You've watched it go through, and Karen had already calibrated the plate earlier. And, and it's a 96 round plate. It's going to take a lot to miss that, but we've done this in 384 as well. Uh, and critically, it was easy. It was really super simple. You've watched the whole process live. If you, if, you, if you ever buy one of these and you don't know how to do it, just watch this back and you can see how to do it. You've almost got a tutorial. And that's really critical. So if we come back to the slides that we had, it does all of these aspects automatically. It, it really takes very little. So actually, Karen, it's not you a genius, it's just the instrument because it is so intuitive and does so much for you in this case. Karen's just talked you through the auto recovery, the sort rescue, the fact we can sort aborts and non-aborts and how easy it has been to set up. We had these in our back pocket just in case it didn't work, but thankfully everything is performing just as we had anticipated, but you can just never be sure. Karen, I can't remember because I've been in the other room. Did you talk about the sort report? So you can look at your purities, you can look at your yields, you can look at the number of cells, you can fix it just as you would with any cell sort, you have all the same capabilities. They have looked at what the MoFlo, the Legacy, the, the, the Astrios, all those things, and they've imported a lot of that into this. So they've kind of made a hybrid of what works really well, and they miniaturize it and bought what's the best of the side effects, that sensitivity, the user friendliness, and everything else for that platform. So the sort reports can be very detailed. It can show you everything and the user, everything that they would need to do. But you know what? You've seen it work. And we did the 96 round plate, so we could count 20 cells. And these weren't beads. Please let me just stress in case you missed it. These were cells, not beads. Okay, so there were GFP tag cells that we were sorting. And you can see, if you can sort 20, if you ask it to sort 20,000, it's going to sort 20,000. And it just shows, it's the quickest way to show that that's the case. So obviously for bulk sort, it's equally relevant. So maybe now it'd be really good time to get that one, that's, that's, that's a local. Maybe it's really good now to actually, to, to walk you through some user examples. And actually Dave Kent's lab have been awesome in supporting this. And, you know, they're one of our big users on the Astrios. Uh, Wan and Kurt have actually been coming in and using the source themselves and being able to prove that this isn't just applicable for those nice GFP cells, but for quite awkward cell types as well. And hemopoietic stem cells are not the easiest to work with. And they've been doing single cell, uh, cell sorting and look at colony formations. But you know what, Karen, it's not me who's the expert here. This is now Karen and all the hard work she put in with the Astrios to get this set up and then just rolls it over on the SRT overnight. So Karen, would you like to pick up from here? You can just tell me when to change slides, it's easier. So if you move over to the to the next slide, the first thing we did with the, the site select SRT was sort of speed, but we moved on for that pretty quickly because it just went over that hurdle almost like stepping stepping off the curve. So we'll move on to the to the next slide. And we've just shown you this in terms of seeing is really believing, but the next challenge was to do um, uh, GFP positive cells um, into different wells at a different number of targets. And we went down to um, one cell per well because the single cell sorting, and that's what you need to know. And, and I don't know how well this came out in the slides, but if you go back to the previous slide, I don't know if that's possible, Pete, but you can just see there's a little picture of ducks in a row on that bottom slide. That's just the way the sort droplet came out. And I do really like all my ducks to 
be in a row. So I, I quite laughed when I saw that under the microscope. So, so the next slide shows a little bit more detail of um, where in the well the deposition is, and we can see that there was only one drop in the well, and thanks to um, Grant and Graham in the lab for helping me uh, get this big tile image on the on the confocal. So it was their idea to do that, so credit where credit is due. But again, you can see it's uh, nicely placed in the well. And then the next slide shows the actual fluorescence data of this. Now, this is um, a, a stem cell panel, um, and it's an ESLAM for any of you that uh, know the terminology. And this is David Kent's group go-to panel if you want to check a source route and particularly single cell cloning. So we're looking for quite a rare population. You know, it's typically 0 0.01 or lower. And nicely within the software, it allows you to emphasize the rare events, and they're shown in blobs of pink on the screen. So hopefully that, that is visible. And they're the cells that, that we were sorting into um, single wells. And then culturing for a week in 96 well plates. And the next slide shows the um, output of that. And, and Juan, the postdoc in the lab, actually did the imaging for this. So it was not biased. I didn't do it, although I was desperately wanting it to work. I put it into his hands. Um, and amazingly, 93 of the wells out of 96 had colonies in at um, day seven post sorting. So that's, you know, 96% survival. And if it can do that with single cell sorting and stem cells, basically, you know, it can do anything. And so we've got a movie of the 96 well plate images. And then I've just done start and stop randomly throughout the movie to see if I can find one of those few wells that didn't have a colony in. And um, I didn't. But we'll uh, now show you that and um, see what happens. Yeah, so so uh, because of how we've had to do this, we actually recorded this uh, in advance because what you're seeing is a different platform to how we're seeing you. what you're seeing right now is different to what we're seeing right now uh, so we've had to pre-record this but it is just random pausing of this movie to show what happens so yeah watch it 96 it's well played to be slam colonies play stop play Stop. Play. So the key thing here, Karen, that you're showing is there was 96 wells, all were put through into a movie stack. So you can see that each well had colonies forming. Now, some of those colonies looked a bit different, and Karen can explain why that is in just a moment. But the random stopping was just to kind of show you that it doesn't matter where you stop, you're going to find cells. And these are all from single cells to start with. So, Karen, back over to you. Oh, Karen, I think I've lost your microphone again. Maybe it wasn't the microphone before. <laughs> No, so actually, while Karen's just playing with her microphone, I, I will ad lib a bit from here. Uh, so, this is where I, I struggle. So, these cells will go on and they will actually differentiate differently from those clonal stem cells to start with. And you do see different colonies forming, which is why uh, you see those differences go through it. So, Karen, I think you may be okay now. Okay, so hopefully now we can go through some of the user data that we um, had used on the site like this study in the short time that we've had it. So um, the ESAM colonies that, that we've seen was, was great to do because it was a rare cell and a bit of a challenge, but absolutely got over that hurdle, which I was really pleased about. Um, so these um, next slides just give you a flavor of some of the, the sorting that we've done. And we've seen this live, so we can skip over this because we've actually um, Done, done this sort, but the purity is shown on this slide here, and um, I can't actually read the percentage because Pete's in front of the slide, but I think it's 98 or 99 percent pure on that screen for a bulk sort for, for GFP sorting, which is important because um, 
obviously we want the fuel to be, to be as, as good as it can be. So the next slide on from that um, shows um, how to operate the, the sort and, and set the set the sort up for a plate sorting, which is shown in the next slide. And again, we've seen that for real going through the software and highlighting the cells, dictating the logic and saying how many cells of a particular type you want them to be in a particular well in the plate. So the next slide on from that then shows some, some bulk sorting and some plate sorting. So the slide on um, again is uh, the ESLAM data that we showed with the rare cells shown in pink. So this is the sort logic we showed previously. And then the next couple of slides is showing the plate format so we can quite swiftly move those, those because we've, we've shown that set up live, but this was the plate that we used for the, for the ESLAM. And then because we wanted to make sure that the um, purity was good, we actually took one of the populations and did a bulk sort, which is what you can see on the screen now, and then ran through some uh, PBS just to make sure the lines were clean before doing some post-sort analysis, which is the next slide. And we can see that the purity of the sorted cells was very good. And you know, this is a bone marrow prep, so it's quite a heterogeneous cell population and many different colors. And we can see there that the sorter has nicely, with good purity, picked out the, the correct cells. And it's the far right plot in the second row down that I've taken as the post-sort purity gate. And again, it's 98 or 99% positive I can't see from here. Pete? Yeah, no, I can't see them either, Karen, but also notice we haven't changed the sort box. And actually, you can see that some have just lost a bit of fluorescence intensity. And actually, if you widen that, the purity would be even better than it is. I don't think it's mixing populations. It is just the, the sort. Usually, when you post analyze, you'll increase that sort box a bit just to allow for a bit of movement within that population upon reanalysis, which you're not seeing here. Yeah, which is why I've got an extra plot. Um, and you get a normal distribution of the sort gate, which is uh, what's shown there. So then going on from that, looking at a different sample type. Um, so this is now a primary mouse cells and it's bulk sorting for genomic analysis. So sorting um, directly into um, trisol. So this is um, cells from, from mouse thymus. And so we've got um, B and T cells um, delineated by various different markers. There and then, if we go through to the next slide, um, we can see the the full panel for the sorting with more cells in the gate. Um, and then further on from that, we can see after um, back flushing the system um, after the sort that it was clean. But here, um, if you go back a slide, Pete, actually, sorry. Oh, sorry, Karen. Sorry, Karen. Um, no, it's my fault. I'm. Um, we can see, as I showed earlier, the green bars showing um, how the sort is progressing and the volume in the in the tubes as well. So it gives you a visualization of uh, how how full the tubes are getting. So the the next slide again shows you that the system is is clean after back flushing and enables you to do a post sort. So it clearly shows a good purity again with a different type of cells um, through the system and. Um, yeah, 99, 98% purity. I think it's 99 in that one. I should have written these numbers down. Apologies for not being able to have them to hand. And this was um, a bulk sort of different direction. So this is the other screen post sort data shown there. So um, we've also sorted diatoms on the sorter recently, which was quite good fun to do. And that worked beautifully well, but I am waiting the results of those to see how um, how they are growing. Um, but single cell sorting diatoms was uh, was our, our our next thing that we've we've done on here, which was good fun to do and uh, nice imaging as well. But we'll report on that another time. Karen, thank you. And hopefully, you've just seen the system live in action. Uh, I think that's so much better than just hearing us talk about how good is it because we could say anything but actually seeing it in action hopefully shows you just how easy you know within that hour we've done a whole sort we've done a, actually a, 
a 96 volt plate saw. We've shown that it's worked. All whilst presenting all about the system itself. And, and I think that gives us a lot of confidence and our users that are using it themselves. Uh, I think that's the mind blowing thing is that they can come in and within an hour, within one hour, they can be self-sufficient and sorting on this. That's all the training they need if they're familiar with the site to flex to start with. So just before we end, I'm gonna be cheeky. There's a podcast series called The Microscopist, which has been really successful. And it's not just microscopist, it, it's also, it, it doesn't matter what you do, it's really interesting to get to know the person's up close and personal. But coming soon is Flow Stars. Okay, so this is introducing all sorts of people, including Ka Karen herself and Derek Davis and a load of other people. So you've got the Isaac president, Johnny Moore, the incoming Isaac president, Rachel Errington, Alfonso Blanco, surely you must know Alfonso, Tim Bushnell, Alina, from a clinical world, Liam Whitby, Paul Robinson, one of the pioneers of flow cytometry, Paul Smith, an ex president of Isaac. It's not just about flow cytometry. Get to know why they're interested in it, their careers, the fascinating stories, but also what they get up to outside of work. How do they balance work life? It's brilliant. You may just sit down with a cup of coffee and it's like you're chatting to them throughout it. So have a watch at some of those. Finally, a quick thanks from Karen and myself to all the people who have inputted into so much of this work that you've seen today. It doesn't just happen by magic and all the, the data and everything. Uh, it's actually, I've left one teaser for you because Karen is now getting ready to shut the instrument down. We want to go back to Karen just to show you the nozzle itself. So Karen, can you switch cameras please and, and go and have a look at the nozzle? Are you just unmute your microphone, Karen? Yeah, yeah thank you, Pete. Schoolboy error. So I can now um, show from the camera view the, the nozzle. So I've just taken it out of the system so i will just switch cameras and so i've taken the nozzle out of the system so i'll put it back into place actually to show you how it's removed so this um, illumination chamber door opens here and then i can press these two clamps and take the nozzle out and the nozzle is situated here where my finger is and this is the nozzle holder here so that is the the bit that does a lot of the work within the within the um, Cyflex SRT, and that's where it's located within the system. Very conveniently, it has the word up on it, so when you're inserting it into the system, the software tells you, gives you a nice little picture, but you just push it into the daughter there, and then close the illumination window, and that is the nozzle ready to go. You visually check the nozzle before you put it into the daughter, just to make sure the aperture is clear, and that's, um, that's all you need to do. So that's the last thing I wanted to, to just show you before we uh, finish the presentation on how easy it is to work. Karen, thank you very much. You might want to switch your camera back around. I, I just pushed actually the, the slide back where you can see the nozzle just on the side and, and Karen just there. So, uh, I, and one final thank you actually. I thank Coulter and Jennifer for introducing the start and Coulter for inviting us to do this. Karen, you have been a superstar and you're so brave to take this on and to do it live and set it up. Thank you so much for being a, a perfect member of the lab and such an example exemplar for any flow cytometrist out there. So actually Karen publicly, thank you very much for being part oh. of our team here. No, thank you, and thank you to Beckman Coulter for providing a wonderful instrument that generally is just fantastic, and you can just walk up and sort, and many of the users have been amazed at the way in which the workflow and the robustness of being able to do that um, is, and the team here at Imaging and Cytometry have been fantastic helping put it through its paces and help me and the users um, yeah, get everything as it should be, so thank you That's to great. everybody. Let's go to we we're going to run out of time for questions, aren't we? So, Jennifer, do we have any questions? Yes, we do. Thank you, uh, Dr. Hogg and Dr. O'Toole, for your informative presentation. We will now start the live Q&A portion of the webinar. If you have a question you'd like to ask, please do so now. Just click on the Ask a Question box located on the far left of your screen. We'll answer as many questions as we have time for. So let's get started. Our first question is, how many users themselves have used it? 
I think it's six or seven. But Cameron, do you want to actually just rattle off their names? Because they, they, they need credit for being so good at beta testing this as well. Yeah, so we've got um, Juan, Alyssa, Dan, Graham, and we have Ian and um, Phil. Uh, Phil, yeah, and Luke. also, yeah, so, and Grace, yeah, it's seven, seven, I think, seven or eight, yeah, seven and a half. There you go. So, and which these are people who can use the sorter, the, the, the Cytoflex SRT themselves. And that's only since, we've really, really only been engaging them since February once we got completely comfortable with it, everything else. So actually, it's, it, it, you know, not very and long I, at all. And actually, I've got a user booked on it at 8 o'clock tonight, and I'm not going to be here. Great. Well, thank you so much for those answers. Okay, we've got another question. Um, how loud is it? So, Karen has actually, uh, the microphone is on top of it, uh, so not very loud at all, uh, which is really good. It's certainly quieter than any sorter that we've had in the past. I can certainly hear myself think. <laughs> well, that's yeah, important. Uh, <laughs> we can't hear yet. So, yeah, it, 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 if right. there's any vibrations, it's in a small room, as you saw when I went and got the plate. Uh, but, yeah, it, 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 I can't hear it. from It's just literally behind that wall. And I can't hear it. Perfect. Another question. Can the samples be chilled? Um, yes, there is a port in the sample collection arm plate for um, a chiller. So if you wanted them to be maintained room temperature or below to port, then yes, yeah, that would be possible. Yes. I don't have that set up here on the beta system, but it, it is certainly OK. Yeah, pretty yeah. classic system for it compared to, it's very similar to what the Astrios has for that. Okay, thank you. And our next question here, what tube types can it sort into? Karen? Um, so the, the tube type that it can sort into, so you've got the 5 mil flow tubes or 15 mil flexion tubes. Um, but I have also taken a 1.5 mil Eppendorf as well and put them on top of a 5 mil flow tube to sort into as well. So there is um, other options as well with um, sorting into additional tubes with a little bit of creativity. <laughs> and what tube types can be used for the starting samples? For the input samples, is that, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. So the input samples are at the standard 5 mil flow cytometer tube. Yeah. OK, great. And here's our next question. Uh, have you tried index sorting? Ah, did we not show that? Yeah, I don't think I showed that button. So yes, index sorting is on by default. So you don't have to remember to turn it on. Um, and for all plate sorting, index sorting is there should you um, wish it. And you have to act actively uncheck it if you don't want it. So that's you know, a good way around. That movie that you saw where all those wells started from one cell, that was all index sorted. It's imperative to their research. They want to know exactly where within the population those cells were coming from. So that was an index source. I, I, sorry, we just must have missed that slide. That's why we do the Q&A, right? <laughs> and we've got one more question here. Uh, have you attempted to run it dry? Well, well, I, I'd like to say uh, on purpose or accidentally on purpose. Um, yes, I have um, been sorting and then um, been distracted and uh, left the sorter. And there is a button on the sorter that tells you how many hours of sorting you have left. So, you know, you, you get some perception of time. Um, but I did walk away and it did then stop itself because it went too low and I was very curious to see um, if there was still solution above the inlet valve and there was. So there was no air in the system. It worked perfectly for rescuing um, the source of status. So all I had to do is just top it up with cheese, start it up again, and it was a dream. So I was very grateful of that. Yeah, I think that's really important. That's a really important question. I think it really rounds up the whole package that 
this is a system, as Greta Karen said, we've got a user coming in tonight at eight o'clock to use it themselves. And you've got to have trust in your users. And for a high-end sorter, quite often that's quite difficult to do. And this has the sensitivity, the speed, the capabilities of high-end sorter, but it's actually on a, on a, on a really super user-friendly platform that actually we can trust them to use so we know they're not going to break it. We also know they're not going to be calling us at 10 or 11 o'clock tonight to put things right for them because uh, it, it, it kind of protects the user. It's not only user-friendly, but it protects the user as well. So they can be confident in using it. I can't stress how important that is. You know, there's bench top sorters, but to be truly walk up and use it, we, we, I, and I can't say an hour's training. Uh, is that right, Kate? It is an hour's training. But it's all like yeah. one to, from this, and to be able to be self-sufficient is just mind blowing from my perspective. I've just not seen that before. And then the users need to be confident that they're getting the right sales with the right purity in the right place because the downstream worth is expenses in time and cost of money for reagents. So, you know, they wouldn't do it if they didn't have absolute confidence in the sorter and their capabilities with it without me present. So, you know, that's, that's credit to the sorter and to themselves to put that knowledge together to, to do that well. Yeah, and the trainer, Karen, so credit to yourself as well. Well, thank you again, Dr. Hogg and Dr. O'Toole, for your time today and for your important research. We would also, um, well, do you have any final comments before we go, actually, Dr. Hogg and Dr. O'Toole? Karen? Um, well, I just want to say thank you to Beckman Coulter and to LabRoots and to yourself for allowing us to present our insights to the Cytoflex SRT today. It's been really good fun to work with and show people how it operates and put it through its paces and to see their reaction to it as well. And, you know, they get genuine pleasure about being able to do this self-service sorting. So, um, it's, you know, it's been, it's been really nice to, to be part of that. So, yeah, thank yeah. you. And you know, it'd be great to get some feedback to what people thought about seeing it live because uh, it is a very different way of doing this. It's not a dry presentation. Uh, it, it, hopefully people felt as though they were in the room, in the lab watching it for some of it. Uh, in a real lab uh, with a real mic, real cytometer, real microscope, and, and I think we're real, aren't we, real people? Uh, so, but yeah, so, so actually, thank you to the audience for putting up for what was quite a bit, jumped about a bit because we were showing it live. So, thank you. Well, thank you both again uh, for being with us today and for sharing your research. And we would like to thank um, Lab Roots and our sponsor, Beckman Culture, for underwriting today's educational webcast. Before we go, I'd like to thank the audience for joining us today and for their interesting questions. Questions we did not have time for today and those submitted during the on-demand period will be addressed by the speakers via the contact information you provided at the time of registration. This webcast can be viewed on demand. LabRoots will alert you via email when it's available for replay. We encourage you to share that email with your colleagues who may have missed today's live event. Until next time. Goodbye.